Wow. Signal. The Wow. Signal was a strong narrow band radio signal detected by Jerry R. Eman on August 15, 1977, while he was working on a SETI project at the Big Ear Radio Telescope of the Ohio State University, then located at Ohio Wesleyan University's Perkins Observatory in Delaware, Ohio. The signal bore the expected hallmarks of non terrestrial and non solar system origin. It lasted for the full 72 second window that Big Ear was able to observe it but has not been detected again. The signal has been the subject of significant media attention. Amazed at how closely the signal matched the expected signature of an interstellar signal in the antenna used, Eamon circled the signal on a computer printout and wrote the comment WOW! on its side. This comment became the name of the signal. Interpretation of the paper chart the circled alphanumeric code 6EQUJ5 describes the intensity variation of the signal. A space denotes an intensity between 0 and 1, the numbers 1 to 9 denote the correspondingly numbered intensities, from 1.0 to 10.0, and intensities of 10.0 and above are denoted by a letter, A corresponds to intensities between 10.0 and 11.0, B to 11.0 to 12.0 etc. The value U, an intensity between 30.0 and 31.0 was the highest detected by the radio telescope. On a linear scale it was over 30 times louder than normal deep space. The intensity in this case is the unitless signal to noise ratio, where noise was averaged for that band over the previous few minutes. Two different values for its frequency have been given. 1420.356 MHz, J. D. Krauss, and 1420.4556 MHz, J. R. Eman. The frequency of the WOW signal matches very closely with the hydrogen line, which is at 1420.4057517 MHz. The hydrogen line frequency is significant for SETI searches because, it is reasoned, Hydrogen is the most common element in the universe, and hydrogen resonates at about 1420.4057517 MHz, so extraterrestrials might use that frequency to transmit a strong signal. The two different values given for the frequency of the WOW signal, 1420.356 MHz and 1420.4556 MHz, are the same distance apart from the hydrogen line, the first being about 0.0498 MHz, 49.75177 kHz, less than the hydrogen line, and the second about 0.0498 MHz, 49.84823 kHz, more. The bandwidth of the signal is less than 10 kHz, each column on the printout corresponds to a 10 kHz wide channel. The signal is only present in one column. The original printout of the WOW signal, complete with Jerry Eman's famous exclamation, is preserved by the Ohio Historical Society. Location of the signal Determining a precise location in the sky was complicated by the Big Ear Telescope's use of two feed horns to search for signals, each pointing to a slightly different direction in the sky following Earth's rotation. The WOW signal was detected in one of the horns but not in the other, and the data was processed in such a way that it is impossible to determine which of the two horns the signal entered. There are, therefore, two possible right ascension values. 19 hours 22 m 24.64 s plus minus fives, positive horn, 19 hours 25 m 17.01 s plus minus fives, negative horn. The declination was unambiguously determined to be 27 dego 3 plus minus 20 feet. The preceding values are all expressed in terms of the B1950.0 equinox. Converted into the J2000.0 equinox, the coordinates become RA equals 19 hours 25 m 31 s plus minus 10s or 19 hours 28 m 22 s plus minus 10s and the declination becomes 26 deg 57 plus minus 20 feet.
This region of the sky lies in the constellation Sagittarius, roughly 2.5 degrees south of the fifth magnitude star group Chi Sagittaria, and about 3.5 degrees south of the plane of the ecliptic. Tau Sagittaria is the closest easily visible star. Time Variation the Big Ear Telescope was fixed and used the rotation of the Earth to scan the sky. At the speed of the Earth's rotation, and given the width of the Big Ear's observation window, the Big Ear could observe any given point for just 72 seconds. A continuous extraterrestrial signal, therefore, would be expected to register for exactly 72 seconds, and the recorded intensity of that signal would show a gradual increase for the first 36 seconds peaking when the signal reached the center of Big Ear's observation window, and then a gradual decrease. Therefore, both the length of the WOW signal, 72 seconds, and the shape of the intensity graph may correspond to an extraterrestrial origin. Searches for recurrence of the signal The signal was expected to appear three minutes apart in each of the horns, but that did not happen. Eamon unsuccessfully looked for recurrences of the signal using Big Ear in the months after the detection. In 1987 and 1989, Robert H. Gray searched for the event using the meter array at Oak Ridge Observatory, but did not detect it. In a July 1995 test of signal detection software to be used in its upcoming project Argus Search, SETI League Executive Director H. Paul Schuch made several drift scan observations of the WOW. Signals coordinates with a 12-meter radio telescope at the National Radio Astronomy Observatory in Green Bank, West Virginia, also achieving a null result. In 1995 and 1996, Gray also searched for the signal using the Very Large Array, which is significantly more sensitive than Big Ear. Gray and Simon Ellingson later searched for recurrences of the event in 1999 using the 26M radio telescope at the University of Tasmania's Mount Pleasant Radio Observatory. Six 14-hour observations were made at positions in the vicinity, but nothing like the WOW signal was detected. Speculation on the signal's origin Interstellar scintillation of a weaker continuous signal similar in effect to atmospheric twinkling, could be an explanation, but that would not exclude the possibility of the signal being artificial in origin. But even the significantly more sensitive Very Large Array could not detect the signal, and the probability that a signal below the Very Large Array level could be detected by the Big Ear due to interstellar scintillation is low. Other speculations include a rotating lighthouse-like source, a signal sweeping in frequency, or a one-time burst. Eamon has voiced doubts that the signal was of intelligent extraterrestrial origin, we should have seen it again when we looked for it 50 times. Something suggests it was an Earth source signal that simply got reflected off a piece of space debris. He later recanted his skepticism somewhat, after further research showed an Earth-born signal to be very unlikely, given the requirements of a space-born reflector being bound to certain unrealistic requirements to sufficiently explain the signal. Also, the 1420 MHz signal is problematic in itself in that it is protected spectrum bandwidth reserved for astronomical purposes in which terrestrial transmitters are forbidden to transmit. In his most recent writings, Eamon resists drawing vast conclusions from half-vast data, acknowledging the possibility that the source may have been military or otherwise a product of Earth-bound humans. Scientists say that if the signal came from extraterrestrials, they are likely to be an extremely advanced civilization, as the signal would have required a 2.2 gigawatt, 2,200,000 kilowatts, transmitter, vastly more powerful than any on Earth. The Earth transmitters with the highest power are the Taldem transmitter at 2,500 kilowatts in long wave and the Bolshakovo transmitter at 2,500 kilowatts in medium wave. Response In 2012 on the 35th anniversary of the WOW signal, a Chibo Observatory beamed a response from humanity, containing 10,000 Twitter messages, in the direction from which the signal originated. 
In the response, Achibo scientists have attempted to increase the chances of intelligent life receiving and decoding the celebrity videos and crowdsourced tweets by attaching a repeating sequence header to each message that will let the recipient know that the messages are intentional and from another intelligent life form.